The following program was recorded at ARC Advisory Group's annual World Industry Forum in Orlando, Florida. I'm pleased to welcome ARC Research Director Craig Resnick. Group. And with me is my special guest, Russ Agrusa, President and CEO of Iconix. Uh, welcome, Russ. How are you doing today, Craig? Good. I think you obviously know that uh, fortunately we're all emerging from this, uh, from this recession, as many of your uh, manufacturing and processes customers have. And during the recession, they took the opportunity to restructure and streamline a lot of their business portfolio and operations. Now, what did you do? Like, what, what, give me a key initiative that you took at Iconix to kind of come up with some products and solutions to kind of help with these, uh, with, the, with these new streamlined operations that the customers have put into place since the recession. Well, Craig, we, we weathered the recession very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we strategically uh, positioned ourselves as helping people be more efficient. Uh, what we found was that many of the factories and plants were not expanding, but were trying to be more efficient, more optimal. We have a perfect series of products that are, uh, that are geared at optimization. Our productivity analytics product, for example, has helped companies like Wrigley's and Baxter and a number of others uh, be more efficient. They could make their lines more productive, uh, thus they not, didn't need to build out uh, more plants and that's how they weathered the recession, and that's how we were able to take care of this opportunity. Oh, good. Now, uh, based on that, uh, based on what you've been hearing from the customers, what, what do you see as the biggest challenges that they have for 2011 and, and forward, you know, as you're talking to your customers? Well, it uh, depends, many of our, 50% of our business is outside the United States, okay. so it depends on who we're speaking with. If we're speaking with uh, American companies, there's a great challenge right now in competition coming from overseas, and efficiency is, is, is paramount there with labor costs and so on. Uh, if it's overseas, we're seeing great expansion in many countries like China and India, uh, even in Germany, where a lot of, pro a lot of products are being manufactured. So uh, we're gearing our products for specific vertical markets, uh, such as renewable energies, and we have a series of visualization products for renewable energies, the water industry, uh, building automation, and in the manufacturing efficiencies area. Okay. So now as we, as we going forward, we talk, let's, let's talk a little bit about technologies. You know, for you to meet your objectives or Iconic's objectives for the next decade, what, what technologies are going to be the most important to you? Well, during a recession, it's always said to be investing in innovation and technology. You shouldn't be scaling that back, you should be accelerating. When people are ready to buy new things, you'd be positioned properly to have those products that people are looking for. Uh, so our area of, of uh, innovation has been in the, of course we're a visualization company, has been in the area of making uh, the visual and, and converting data into information and delivering to any client that's out there. It can be an iPhone, it might be a Windows 7 phone, the browser, the desktop, or possibly over the cloud. Hmm. Now, as you know from the whole theme of this forum, all you hear about is energy. Energy, energy, energy. So what impact does energy have to play right now at Iconix as far as your plans for the future, your strategies, and, and plans you have to implement some of those strategies? Iconix is an independent company and uh, we're uniquely positioned where we can tie to all these different uh, assets and energy systems. Uh, we have well over 40,000 uh, installed systems in building automation. Buildings have been dealing with energy issues forever. Uh, so we see ourselves with our energy analytics product and uh, using some new technology called fault detection diagnostics. We're able to connect to all the different meter types, uh, pulse meters for water, for energy, and for gas, uh, and we're able to pull that information and visualize it in a way that's very useful to people. So now that brings on the subject of innovation, coming up with new products and processes. I mean, it's important for your customers to compete. It's important for Iconics to compete. So how are you personally uh, driving Iconix to innovate? Uh, are, you, are you increasing your R&D budget? But you know, what are you doing as far as to making sure that you're uh, driving innovation throughout your whole company? Well, Craig, you know that we've always been innovative. Uh, we were the, one of the first to be on the WPF and rich visualization and 64-bit platforms. Uh, what we do to drive innovation at our company is we see what the technology leaders are doing out there. We listen to our customers, and we give our uh, employees 
a certain amount of time to innovate on their own, to come back with ideas, things that get them excited. You have to be passionate when you're innovating. If there isn't any passion, it's just a job, you're going to get a blasé product. So passion is core to our innovation. Right. And you're doing innovation on a global basis, is that, is that correct? Yes. We have uh, three development centers. We have one in uh, the Czech Republic outside of Prague, and uh, we have one in Italy and in, in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Okay. Great. And another, another term that we're constantly hearing about is the cloud, the cloud computing. So I guess the first part of the question, of course, is what impact is the cloud having on Iconix itself as far as in your products and solutions? And how do you see the cloud playing as far as at, at your customers and how you're able to best service your customers? Well, the, the cloud is a, a very interesting area. We're designing our products for the cloud, but we're finding in manufacturing, for example, having your data public on a public cloud gets uh, some of our customers and gives them a little bit of angst. However, we're seeing in building automation, for example, where there isn't any IT staff and buildings need to be modern, you need to be doing uh, energy management, that the cloud is a perfect case where it fits uh, for that market space. So we are doing a lot of work in the cloud, specifically in the Azure environment with the Microsoft cloud uh, uh, technology, and we're designing our products to be cloud enabled. Okay, and uh, my final question is going to be related to the cloud is obviously you've been a, you've been a key member of the OPC Foundation for, you know, probably since its inception. Uh, how do you see the cloud dovetailing together with some of the latest OPC technologies such as OPC UA? We're extremely excited about OPC UA. Uh, for the first time, it enables from the device to the enterprise communications in a very secure fashion. So we're seeing, uh, for example, at the SPS show in Europe recently, many devices, many uh, traditional PLCs and so on, temperature controllers, are now embedding OPC UA at the device level. That will allow us to connect up to the enterprise, up to the cloud, and will give our software another unique capability uh, to the users. Excellent, thank you very much Russ. Pleasure thank having you, you here today. Thank you. Again, this is uh, Craig Resnick, Research Director, uh, ARC Advisory Group from the ARC Orlando 2011 Forum. Thank you very much.